father and son, and as it had happened back in 1967, all young men of Singapore, regardless of race, language or religion, go through this same rite of passage. Today, it's time for these early pioneer national servicemen to witness their sons do what they themselves had done many years back. They are sons of Singapore, all about to take the journey to become men. The test for all will begin on an island away from home. Pulau Teko. Over the years, these words have resounded repeatedly, bringing Singaporean men together, shoulder to shoulder, in defense of their nation. For the fathers, there is a certain sense of deja vu when they listen to their sons take the oath of allegiance. And vigilant. And vigilant. Obey the laws of the Republic of Singapore. Obey the laws of the Republic of Singapore. Yeah, when I first said it in early 70s, I try to find the seriousness of the word. And affirm that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Republic of Singapore. It seems tough to fulfill, but I'm glad I made it. Well, when I was watching, I feel like, you know, myself taking the oath, you know, 30 years ago. <laughs> it's the same oath. Singapore's army has since 1967 been a citizen's army and the need for it to be so has never changed. However, many other things have changed since. Training facilities, living conditions and equipment have come a long way. Living quarters are spacious and comfortable, enabling our soldiers to get enough proper rest and be ready for the next day of training. Today, most of what the soldiers wear have been custom designed. Gone are the days when everyone, regardless of size, had to make do with mass-produced shoes and uniforms. Better uniforms and equipment are not the only improvement. There is a saying that an army fights on its stomach. Army coats and atrocious tasting food are a thing of the past. Today, specially catered meals and changing daily menus ensure the soldier receives well-balanced, nutritious and tasty food. Having seen the training facility for themselves, parents today can leave their sons feeling somewhat comforted. However, having been a soldier themselves, they would also know that regardless of the changes, the army can be no bed of roses and the boys themselves do realize this. Yeah, I'm afraid that like, the sergeant may not be good, may not be nice to us. So maybe we have a lot of tekan or what. I'm quite nervous of what is to come about and all the tekaning and stuff. But I think it's just part of training and part of character building. Okay, gentlemen, come, turn to your right and move off. Inevitably, each recruit will have his own quiet reservation as he begins this new phase of his life. Since the very first batch of men were enlisted to serve the army, till today, the shaving off of the head of hair had been a symbolic tradition. The civilian way of life is left behind and the regimented military lifestyle is embraced. I think the shaving process is to show equality amongst us. Uh. It doesn't really matter where we come from. If we are rich, we are poor, we are come from different races, Malay, Chinese, Indian, we are all the same. Uh. Regardless of race, language, religion or status, every Singaporean male goes through the rigors of national service. Every man is now visibly the same. All are equal in the army. The Standard Obstacle Course, commonly known as SOC, is one of the Army's toughest endurance tests. 
All soldiers had to clear 11 obstacles and run 1.5 kilometers within 10 minutes 30 seconds. Besides the SOC, all soldiers must also go through the route march, covering progressively 8 kilometers, then 16 kilometers, then finally 24 kilometers, dressed in their full battle order. Calvin is among the officer cadets taking this test today. Like many of his peers, Calvin struggled during his recruit days to overcome the physical and mental demands of the course. The low wall was really very daunting to me and every time I looked at the low wall I would have this phobia about crossing it. I would always tell myself that I wouldn't be able to do it, I wouldn't be able to cross it in time. My instructors and my peers would give me that little bit of encouragement, taught me to be strong enough to cross it with, with a little more effort. Um, a person usually won't know his limits until he really pushes himself beyond them. And this, this attitude has translated into other aspects of my life. Army training is progressive. And with technology, it's made more efficient. At the individual marksmanship trainer, simulators are used to train soldiers on the basics of marksmanship. This builds confidence in the soldiers and allows trainers to spot and correct mistakes before actual live rounds are used. With better prepared soldiers, live firing exercises move more swiftly and waiting time is reduced. Safety is never compromised and this is all the more urgent when live ammunition is being used. And for those soldiers who have been selected to be gunners, they also undergo training on simulators. These simulators also have sensors that track the firer's performance and enable instructors to give more detailed feedback. But nothing beats the real thing. nervous the first time I fired and uh, it was only when I managed to hit the first round where my where I had a boost of confidence and that was the turning point of my life in army hey, how you drive how I drive you my hand and leg how to how I'm drive I mean you drive dangerously excuse me I'm army train okay army train which unit which you need? What the vocation? singer. Yeah, why? Complain ah. Uh, uh, now driver, is it? Oh, so you're a driver? Yeah, I'm a driver. I'm a wild trained, okay, in army. Since I'm a driver, but they give me fit and strong training. Okay. Even now, you want me to do stunt? No, need stunt double one ah. Uh. Like real, you do stunts? How about then? After your BMT, your life was so easy. Just inside the tunnel, drive here, drive there, right? Excuse me, driver also very important no? An army is made up of soldiers from various combat and non-combat vocations. While the combat soldiers take up the more arduous role in the front line of the battle, non-combatants play an equally important role in various support functions. They are all part of the crucial grease that keeps the fighting machinery moving. Kesselbach is a driver from a combat unit. Although his vocation is often wrongly viewed as undemanding, Kesavan knows this is far from the truth. It's true. I'm just a driver. I have 30 lives behind me. I'm responsible for the 30 lives. I have to make sure they reach the decision on time. So they come back there safely. The common belief that servicemen in supporting roles lead easy lives is something actor Mark Lee also grappled with. 
driver life, the most important is the road safety because we are driving three and five ton on the road. Normally, private car, if we hit private car, you just imagine, you know, incredible hawk hit Vincent Ng. No matter which specialized field soldiers are in, they learn new skills through training and gain experiences that are of lifelong value. James is an ammunition store. His job is to account for highly explosive ammunition that are worth millions of dollars. I think my responsibility as an ammunition storeman is just as important as any other vocations, such as um, guards or commandos in the SAF, because we are the ones who actually ensure that the ammunition delivered to these combat units are safe. Uh, I can take it easy sometimes, but what's the point? Um, sometimes our work may be mundane and I feel frustrated. But I think by keeping a positive mind and building good rela working relationships with my commanders and my peers makes the job a lot more interesting. Every army experience will be an unforgettable. Generation after generation has carried the responsibility of defending this nation. The weight of this responsibility is most evident when soldiers are presented with their rifle, an event that men up till today can never forget. Daniel, oh, sir! You think, sir? Our forefathers have set the example, and now their sons bravely follow in their footsteps. You think, sir? There is a. As these boys are molded into men, they know their duty is to keep their families safe, and in time, they will pass on this honor of defending Singapore to their sons. Every Singaporean son must serve his term until he's done And every single breath he takes comes a born which cannot break Been through lightning, rain and sun Now we're back to where we first began Walls of fire we once run Forget you friend Every year, some 3,000 Singapore soldiers go to the land down under to take part in Exercise 1. Shoal Water Bay Training Area in Central Queensland, Australia has been a training ground for Singapore soldiers since 1990. For many of these men, this is probably the only time they'd get this close to kangaroos and wallabies in outback Australia. Exercise Wallaby is uh, rather adventurous to me because one of the reasons is uh, I get to train with, with other forces such as the armour. So you get to see a lot of armoured tanks uh, moving here and there. It's a quite interesting sight. On screen, actor Vincent Ng has had his fair share of adventure. But none of it was anything compared to what he experienced during his army days. Vincent was enlisted as a commando in 1994, and as a commando, he'd been for training overseas, including Thailand and Brunei. It was tough, but I enjoyed it, and it was fun, and it's really memorable. It, bring, it, it, it got a lot of good memories, uh, because you, you go there with your friends and buddies. I remember there was once when I was in Brunei, we, my, my team got lost in the jungle, and we ran out of water. In the end, we have to drink water from drain, from stream, from... You know those muddy, muddy, milky water, but nothing happened. Army can be quite fun if you got the right attitude and mentality. There are a lot of people, they so-called, uh, they get this called sell on. Uh. Actually, they are not sell on. Uh. They got the right attitude and mentality, so they, they know how to enjoy. They know how to enjoy army life. They like all the jungle, jungle stuff. They like all the army, army stuff. They like all the, they like shooting. They can, everybody enjoy diff different kind of things. Uh. 
Sometimes, the excitement just comes naturally. Being airborne is something many soldiers dream of. The fall is a thousand feet to the ground. The fear of such a great fall is natural. Whether it's their first jump or their tenth, this is definitely the adventure of a lifetime for these soldiers. But no one can deny the adrenaline rush and immense feelings of anticipation as the moment draws closer. It is time. One final check is carried out. No denying it. For many, one of the most adventurous moments they will always remember from their lives in the army is when they get to fly. When you're in the air, you feel a little like a bird, but it's more of like a gliding feeling, and you the, the view is just spectacular. And really, nothing I, nothing I know of could probably replace that. Beyond the exhilaration of the moment lies something more precious the trust and interdependence fostered when the men put their lives in each other's hands. A soldier can never stand alone in the army. A soldier alone can never make our army. As early as May every year, a select group will start preparing for the National Day Parade. For our guys in the army, this yearly affair is a test of their ability to work together as a team. A test that they pass with flying colors every year because of the strong camaraderie among the participants. And it's important to have a spirit of unity as a, as a group because we are soldiers, we're going to be working together. And um, NDP exemplifies this because we come together on our weekends to work together as a unit to perfect our drills for the National Day event. Through this tough training, we have a greater bonding and uh, definitely the feeling is great after the event is over. And there can be nothing more fulfilling for these hundreds of men than that moment when they salute in sync the President and the people of Singapore. Army life is not all work. There also comes a time to celebrate. Dining inns are formal military dinners where officers and warrant officers celebrate the achievements of the Corps and its traditions. It also celebrates the brotherhood among fellow officers. The history of dining in is generally when it's done in the olden days, uh, a sign of victory you know, after a great battle where uh, the commanders were called for a good dinner to do a celebration. And that's where, you know, you, you create a camaraderie among all the uh, officers' call. Friendships formed in the army often extend far beyond national service. Years on, the spirit of camaraderie developed in their army days is still alive among Vincent and his platoon mates, even as they participate in their last in-camp training. A lot of reservists look forward to ICT because of friendship. You miss ICT because of your friends. Uh. In the army, uh, me and my platoon mates, we are like, we train together, we kind of so-called uh, together. During that two and a half years, you, you spend more time with your platoon mates, your army friends, more than your family members. And that builds a very strong relationship between each other. I believe when, when there's all given a choice, I'd rather choose to go with my platoon mates than going with somebody I don't know that well. Of course, you are more willing to die for friends than, than a stranger. For a soldier, 
his journey begins alone. He leaves his family behind for a new life with strangers. However, once training starts, he discovers that many others are on this same strenuous journey. And after a while, there is a newfound sense of belonging among his friends. It's these bonds of friendship and trust that make training easier and life as a soldier more fulfilling. After all, it's each other that they will have to rely on when the time comes and bullets start flying. The will to fight is strong, as the bonds between our soldiers are strong. It's this will to fight and stand our ground that will keep us safe from all threats and ensure we will always be ready for any mission. is hot. Three terrorists have taken over this building and they have taken two hostages, one male and one female. And they are located within room one at level two. Team one, you'll come in by this window and move through the hall and to this main door and wait for my command. Team two, you'll come in by this door and wait for my command. I don't care, I want it now or both of them will die. This may just be an exercise, but the army's ready for real emergencies. Today, the threat of terrorism here, like anywhere else in the world, is very real. That is why the army maintains a high state of readiness. It is mission ready. Threats may come from terrorists planting bombs and using biochemical weapons. To counter this, the army's chemical Biological, Radiological and Explosives Defense Group, or CBRE, was formed. Maintained at a high state of readiness, this unit is ready at a moment's notice to counter any such threats. It is equipped with the latest technology. But its edge is in the carefully selected, well-trained and motivated soldiers. The primary role of a soldier will remain the same. That would be to fight a conventional war in that sense. On the secondary level right now, as, as there are more terrorism, I think that the role of the soldier has been expanded rather than changed. The war today is different. No longer is the straightforward scenario where you know where your enemy is and who they are. Today, your enemy is hidden. It's up to the soldier to always be on the alert. To give strength to diplomacy and to play a part as a global citizen, the Singapore Army performs peace support operations overseas. And this includes sending our soldiers over to a young country, Timor-Leste. When I first saw the mission, I was really excited about it. And the fact that I was selected to be part of the force going up to East Timor uh, gave me a sense of pride and achievement. Although peacekeeping missions can be an adventure, they are definitely not holiday trips. Our soldiers sacrifice their time away from home to participate in these missions because they know that as they contribute to global peace, ultimately 
they are preserving Singapore's well-being. And it will always be something they are proud to have done. Right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. We'll do it right and we'll be the best. As the army takes measures against terrorist threats, the citizen soldier is not excluded from new roles. Every Singapore man will have to go through a number of mobilization exercises, as well as in camp trainings or ICTs. ICT now also involves protecting our key installations installations crucial to the country's stability and economy. These include places like Changi Airport and Jurong Island. What we are doing is basically to sit in these vehicles. As time arises, right, when I need to be use my weapon, I'll be there to use my MG. Basically, we need to protect this installation to increase the confidence of the public and the investor. My role in this, in this area is to protect the whole area which is given to me. And no doubt it could be very boring also, I mean, you can see from here, uh, just vast space and seas only, but we have the duty to play. The experience our soldiers have in the army is a colourful one. One filled with self-growth, adventure and camaraderie. Our soldiers Train hard. Train real. Equipped with the best technology. And train safe. To stay prepared for the new challenges ahead. They know they are ultimately here to defend our country, their families and friends, their way of life the economy, and the land they call home. Here we go, we came all together from different walks of life. We packed our bags, we left our homes to be all we can be. Training to be soldiers and guardians of our land. We love our land, this is our home, we'll keep it safe and free. Everybody say, up, 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 get down Don't turn away till you touch the ground Just the beginning, it's never not the end We'll overcome and we'll come on It is the best, yeah, yeah Are you ready to go? Yeah, yeah Is there 